Okay, good afternoon, good evening, or good night, and welcome to this ALTX interview, the first ALTX interview of 2017. So this year, we're going to do things a little, a little bit differently. The questions I've asked are a little bit different, and the way I'm setting this up is a little bit different. And this time, I have a microphone. Now, this is a cheap microphone off of Amazon, so every once in a while, you may hear something like this. Sorry about that. Until I can afford a better microphone, this is all I can do. So today I have an interview with a gentleman named Jay. Uh, Jay is uh, currently living here in Senda. The interview is interesting for you guys. Now one thing, his audio is very, very quiet. So. Hopefully we'll be able to get something out of this. Let's go. Hi, I'm Jay from the Philippines. Hi, Jay. I'm a trainee for a company here in Japan specializing in metal sheet painting. We basically do dent repairs and other automotive painting stuffs. One of the reasons why I came here is for experience and it it's also a dream for me living here in Japan, even in a short period of time. Okay, so um, if you guys didn't hear, Jay is come has come here for experience. Um, he is a metal worker, and he paints metal, um, so siding and stuff like that. And uh, he came. He's been here only a couple months, um, so it's really exciting to get someone's opinion who's been here only a little bit, only a little bit. Let's see what else he has to say. Oh, he's from the Philippines too. What I like, what I like in Japan is the peaceful way of living. The peaceful way of living. I don't know with others, but that's how I observe on how the people act around. Well, that's interesting. So, uh, Jay likes the peaceful way of living, which I can, I can kind of, I can see what he's talking about. Um, Coming from Colorado, where I grew up, uh, Colorado is a very busy, busy place. Where I grew up, it was fairly busy. Um, out later, when my parents moved out to the middle of nowhere, uh, it's not so, not so busy. But it was always busy, always cars, there's always people, always everything going on. The only time it was silent and quiet was like three o'clock in the morning and even then you could hear parties going on you could hear people fighting and stuff like that some sometimes Colorado is a great place great place just where I grew up in Aurora it was a little bit sketchy right, let's see what, he, what else he has to say what I dislike is that if you want something to eat at night or something you need to buy at past 10 p.m. you just can't because supermarkets are closed at exactly 10 p.m. unless you are convenience stores near you so um, what he said that's that's kind of true so here all the stores everything opens at 10 and closes at 10 unless you're a school unless it's a school a government building or a 24-hour market like I don't know well some of the, some of them so if you live if you need to get something after 10 p.m., if it's a specialty item you can't get in a convenience store, it's nigh impossible. Um, unless you have places like a Costco, um, but even then, that's that closes around 8 or 9. Here comes the microphone sound. Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, that's one thing that I don't really I don't really like here. Um, there's not so many, much access to stores 24 hours a day. Uh, like back home, we have Walmart, which is open 24 hours a day, and there's a Walmart pretty much everywhere. We have drive through Starbucks and stuff like that that are open 24 hours a day. You can, you know, it's a lot more convenient in America for 24-hour services. But that being said, Japan trumps America and a lot of other things so yeah it's kind of a trade-off but 
you know, unless you live out of out in a place like I do, where this is the boondocks, the sticks, the middle of nowhere, you you're generally you're generally uh, you can find nice shops open all the time. All right, let's see what else he has to say. Also, communication you cannot buy SIM cards only. That's why I am depending on free Wi-Fi every time I get out of house. Ah, okay, okay. I've heard this before. Um, so, for SIM cards for cell phones, uh, when you travel, you can buy SIM cards, and it. Uh, I guess you can use them for the different regions. So, uh, here in Japan, apparently you can't buy SIM cards, or they're really hard to come by. I don't know what the reason. So you have to rely on free Wi-Fi wherever you go. And the good thing about Japan is that free Wi-Fi is everywhere pretty much. Um, it, it's gotten better and better as time has gone on. Uh, when I came here there was no Wi-Fi whatsoever. You had to have your own Wi-Fi and that was it. That? But um, as time has gone on there's free Wi-Fi everywhere. Uh, it's mostly it's mostly SoftBank Wi-Fi, so um, you have to log in and you have to pay a little money, but you can get Wi-Fi if you really need it. Um, other than that, there's free Wi-Fi at like Starbucks and they broadcast it everywhere, so it's not really hard to come by. I think the difference with my country is the traffic system. Yeah. And also he, here, here I feel this. I feel safe walking around past eleven p.m. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So I I kind of ask, what is the difference between your home country and your home city, uh, as opposed to where you live now, which here where he lives is Sendai. Um. So, and he said the traffic system, and the fact that he feels safe walking around after 11 p.m. Now for me the traffic system um, it's not much different than back home either than you're on the opposite side of the road. Uh, Americans drive on the right side while Japanese drive on the left side. Either than that there's not much difference. Um, the rules of the road are pretty much the same. Um, just the symbols are different. Now, staying outside after 11 p.m., that's really interesting to me. Uh, where I grew up in Colorado, we could stay out forever. Um, I, you know, I worked downtown Denver, and I would, work in, I would work until 11, and then I would come home, you know, I would walk around downtown. We could go around, and it was the safest place around. Now, granted, where I was, it was Cherry Creek. I kind of richer neighborhood but still it was downtown and even uh now in you know downtown i last time i went i wouldn't feel unsafe walking around so that's kind of interesting that jay said that he doesn't really feel safe um after 11 in his home country it's kind of cool let's see what else he has to say yes the hospitality feels almost the same, except they speak in fluent Nihongo, and I wish it has subtitles sometimes. So the hospitality is about the same, he said. I think uh, um, he said the hospitality is is about the same, but they speak in fluent Japanese, and he wished they had subtitles. So I think by hospitality, the... Uh, the TV and the everything that was going on, uh, the media maybe, would have subtitles. Um, no, I can see that, yeah. It's a little difficult at first when you come here. Um, and one thing that's actually interesting is on TV they subtitle everything. Uh, when you're watching the... Sorry, I, I don't know what's going on. Microphone. I don't know. Um, but 
they will, this is actually the complaint that a lot of foreigners have, that when foreigners speak in fluent Japanese on TV, they'll subtitle them. And I've heard it on like the Japan Times and things where people are just going to, going to whine about everything. Um, and, uh, there were foreigners who say, oh, I, I was speaking perfect Japanese, but they still subtitle me. This is racist Japan. But then they don't take five minutes to observe that just about every program they subtitle. It, it makes no sense, but I can kind of understand what he says. He's on it, it's, yeah, I can understand it. Well, I may see loud New Year's Eve celebration in my country. Here, it's like... It's very, it's very silent. Same as every night. In the past few months, I see... I think I haven't encountered any strange things. Okay, so that, that was interesting. Um, one thing that he kind of misses... He misses? is how is the noise, the constant noise of his hometown. Here in Japan, it's super duper quiet. And th that's not, <coughs> that is an understatement. Um, here in Japan, it is deadly silent. Even in the big cities, you will be hard pressed to hear an alarm going off. You'll be hard pressed to hear music going blaring or people yelling and fighting even when they're drunk that's really very rare okay before i begin this microphone something's going on so no more microphone for the last little bit sorry Place. Not Sendai, but I've been to Matsushima and that place is really fascinating. Advice or... So, well, I, I asked him, uh, what's his favorite place in Japan? What's some weird things he'd seen? So he said there's nothing that he'd seen that was really strange. And uh, he, he hasn't, he's, hasn't been here long enough to be able to really explore. They went to Matsushima, and Matsushima is a really nice place. Um, it's famous for um, for having thousands of islands just out in the middle of the ocean. Um, it used to be one giant land mass and then earthquakes and everything happened and they all fell and there's just some that came up like this and they're all covered in pine, pine trees because Matsu means pine and Shima means island so pine island there's hundreds of them um, and luckily, Matsushima was saved during the Daishin side, 311, um, because of those islands. Some of them got destroyed, so there's not as many. But it's a really great place, and if you ever have a chance to, I would suggest going to Matsushima. Um, it's really good, and they have great food. The past great place better bring a bunch of Japanese language season for because there's just 20% of encountering English, English speaking people, and in that 20%, there might be 1 to 5% who speaks in your own language. That's all. Okay, so what, what um, he likes about Japan, the um, advice for coming to Japan was let's listen to that one more time. Because there's just 20% of places we need fascinating. Okay, so here's his advice. advice Japan's great place better bring a bunch of Japanese language to support. Because there's just 20% of encountering English speaking people. And in that 20%, there might be 1 to 5% who speaks in your own language. Hmm, okay, so that's, that's a good point um so he said that in in japan it's a it's a good place to practice your language but also learn other languages because there's the japanese which is the main language of course and there's the english-speaking population and then 
within that, there may be one or two people only, or, you know, a, a very slim percent that actually speaks your language, which is a very, uh, which is a very good point. Um, so, yeah, if you come to Japan, when you come to Japan, and if you're in Japan now, definitely practice your Japanese. Um, obviously, you're living here, so it would be uh, good for you to be able to do that. So, I hope that you guys can learn and use your Japanese and uh, make friends with everyone that you can. And that is where I'm going to leave this video um, for today. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos from me, uh, please hit the subscribe button. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the question or in the comment section below. And I'll try my best to get back to you. And one more thing, if you or someone you know has a story about Japan, uh, who has been to Japan and wants to tell their story and give some advice, or anyone who wants to come to Japan and wants to talk about their uh, preconceptions and uh, what they expect when they do come to Japan, I would love to hear from you and maybe get you on this channel. So if you could leave your name in, your name in the comments and give me a little tell me that you want to interview with me, I would love to get in contact with you. So, again, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And have a great day.